In today's video, we're going to take a close look at what a project engineer's job is within the construction industry. We'll dive into the role and responsibilities of a construction project engineer, exploring their daily tasks, and talk about what skills are required to be a project engineer. So let's go. All right. So aside from getting an internship within the construction industry, the PE or project engineer job position is going to be the first step along the construction project management career path. If you graduated with a construction related yes. degree and you're looking for an introductory role within the industry, getting a job as a project engineer would most likely be your first step. Now I say most likely because of a few factors. Construction companies aren't all the same, and job titles mean different things at different companies. Some companies have project engineer roles, while other companies could potentially call that same exact role an assistant project manager. Or some companies could have project engineer level one, project engineer level two, and PE3, job titles which would later transition into an assistant project manager role. Some companies might not even have the project engineering job title. You might work as an assistant project manager and then become a project manager after that. It all depends and the point is that the project engineer role or the concept of this role is the first step towards becoming a project manager within the construction industry. So what are the responsibilities of a project engineer? So number one is submittals and managing submittals. PEs assist in creating the submittal log, reviewing, approving, and distributing submittals throughout their entire workflow. A project manager should be involved in reviewing some of the more complex submittals as a new PE might not know what to look for. Number two, material procurement. So PEs should be partly or fully responsible for following up and assisting to track procurement items on a construction project. Now a PM should be verifying the information and back checking it against the overall schedule, but the PEs can do a lot of the legwork to ensure that information is up to date based on what's being reported for lead times from the subcontractors. Number three, RFIs. So PE should understand how to properly write RFIs with enough supporting backup information to get a clear answer. I see too many RFIs that are written without clear direction, without supporting backup. So this should be one of the main focuses as a PE starting out within the industry. Number four, bid package procurement. So what I mean by this is most often assisting the project manager during pre-construction and the buyout phase. This could be writing scope packages, making up follow-up calls to track down proposals, to actually scoping contractors on less complex trade packages. If you've been a PE for a while, you'll eventually manage multiple trade packages under the overall project from start to finish, and which will prepare yourself for the overall PM role. Number five, change management. So as a PE, you might be tasked or partly tasked with the assistance of the project manager to compile change orders during construction. So oftentimes a construction bulletin will be released updating design, which could deduct scope or add scope, which has an associated cost and potentially a schedule attached to it. So as a young PE, your job would be to track down these change orders to compile the information along with the supporting backup alongside your project manager so that you can present this to the owner. Number six, document control. So as a PE, you'll assist with the general organization of project documents, understand where to save documents, and you could be responsible for uploading new drawings as a result of construction bulletins and much more. Number seven, meeting minutes. Now a PE typically won't run meetings earlier in their career. That's typically the responsibility of a project manager or some more experienced PEs. Now the project engineer would however be responsible for taking and distributing meeting minutes which are the notes from a meeting, documenting what was discussed in the meeting and what the action items were. And finally, number eight, contracts. Now, a PE typically won't have the experience to write owner contracts or even larger and more complex subcontracts, but a PE might be expected to write some smaller subcontracts and a PE should be able to read those contracts and understand the language and the responsibility provided by those contracts. So just keep in mind that the project engineer is essentially there to provide support to the project manager and the project superintendent while learning about the different complexities of the construction industry. Now I'll say as a project manager, I still perform every single task that I mentioned on the PE list, just to different degrees based on how the project is set up. As a project manager, you might not always be on a project that requires the support of a PE, 
so you can and will likely still perform all these tasks as you advance in your career. So a PE's day-to-day -day life is addressing one or multiple of the items that I listed. The skill set of a good PE is someone who is hardworking, someone who is a self-starter or capable of managing themselves and their tasks, someone who is highly organized, and finally someone who is good or great with communication, both written and verbal. So that's our project engineer role at a high level. If you do have specific questions, absolutely hit me up in the comment section below. And as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.